Welcome back mentees, Omar from Near Mint Condition here. And today I'm gonna do my monthly haul for the month of March of 2019. Now keep in mind, this is a part one because I had a birthday and I went a little crazy, so I had to sell some things and anyway. So part one, cause I did wanna break it down and talk a little more about these books. So part two will be coming out later on this week. So please stay tuned. Okay, let's just go on with this. I love Goodnight Poon Poon. I read number one and fell in love with it. So when Barnes & Noble had a buy two, get one free from Viz, and I got the coupon, I went ahead and got it. I was always really intrigued by the way the numbering system worked when the spines are aligned. I thought that was really cool. There's seven volumes in total, number seven being pretty thin compared to the rest of them. Yo, let's look at the inside artwork, though. Let's just grab it random. I love... In Inio Asano's artwork. I think it's very detailed, but you know, still has that little manga touch to it. If you don't know what Goodnight Poon Poon is, I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis of it because this is the main character right here, and that's the way that you see them. Now, no, not everybody sees him that way. It's just the way that the reader is supposed to see him and his whole family. It's all about his, his mom, his dad, his uncles. Anyway, I've enjoyed volume one so much i went ahead and got volume two my wife is also hooked on these so i have become a inio asano fan because of this series um if you saw my convention haul from c2e2 you know that i picked up rust i started reading this because i was wondering if it was if it was okay for my nine-year-old to read and eh, i mean there's some elements in here of war and it's a little graphic at times but i'm really digging the color and the artwork I got about, let's see, a little further than this. I got about 50 pages in. Yeah, it's like alternate reality, a little steampunkish, But I'll, I dig the story so far, and I'm a big fan of this independent-looking artwork. I'm really digging it. What I did not know is that there are some volumes that are in hardcover that are out of print. So, damn it, now I got to go and find those. So this is, I picked up volume one and two at the con. Um, also at the convention, I picked up Extreme X-Men. As you all know, I'm trying to do a custom bind of this. This is sort of like 1.5 of Extreme x band I guess that's what this would be considered as after Volume 1, but be before Volume 2. And yes, I'm just, for the last couple of years, I've been wanting to do a custom bind, and now I've got them all. Now it's just a matter of actually doing it. But the thing is, do I really want to? Because as soon as I do it, Marvel's going to announce, hey, we got the legit one coming out. And again, from our Hunt and Hall videos, uh, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Architects of Forever, ran into Jonathan Hickman, was not expecting him to be there. And this is the only Jonathan Hickman book I was missing. Well, this in Volume 2. Because, you know, I really wasn't a fan of this book. I, I, I haven't read Volume 2 because... This is one of those Jonathan Hickman books that, to me, I don't know. I didn't see the payoff, but maybe that's because I haven't read Volume 2, so I need to pick that up. Got to see Jason Aaron, and I got my copy of Men of Wrath by Jason Aaron, signed to me. Uh, this is stuff by Ron Gardney. If you haven't read this, this is really good. It's a, it's a lot different than, I guess, it, no, you know what? It's a little closer to his stuff like he did in Scalped. It's really good. He said he was done with it, and I asked him if he would continue it again, and he said... There is another story that he wants to do, so maybe he'll team up with Ron Garney. Picked up Mr. Miracle, read the first issue, loved it. I'm going to review it on Omnibros Live. Don't want to flip through here, but this is regarded as one of the best books that have come out uh, last year. So, uh, a book that probably nobody talks about, but here's Catwoman by Chuck Dixon and Jim Ballant. I gave this book a bunch of crap on Omnibros Live because, well, DC has a tendency to cancel books like my Robin and my Nightwing. And my Birds of Prey had Supergirl and Green Lantern and Aquaman. But yet we got this book right here that I didn't think very many people wanted. Mainly because it's, I don't know. I mean, Jim Ballon is definitely an acquired taste. Um, unless you're a big fan of his. Like I said, he was, um, he had a, I remember he had a huge book with uh, Purgatory. So I know there were people buying up his books. So that is volume two. There has not been a volume three solicited. Yes. Yes, this is stuff from my childhood. Kicking off with one of my favorite graphic novels here. And this is... Here, let me go to the beginning. Let me show you this awesome cover here from the Scorpion Connection. I don't know what it was about that cover as a kid. I was like, oh, that is so cool. Wolverine looks awesome. So that is the Scorpion Connection. This is Archie Goodwin and Howard Chaikin. 
And this is back when Taylor Chaikin had a more of a Frank Miller look to his artwork. He's kind of evolved and done his own thing. And actually, Frank Miller has now evolved and done his own thing, too. And yes, The Jungle Adventure here by Walter Simonson. And you may recognize this guy from his art in Hellboy, Mike Mignola. Those two books alone are worth this epic collection. This is volume two, by the way. If you own the Omnibus, if you were lucky enough to get those Omnis early enough, this follows right afterwards. This follows right after volume one of the epic collection. And a lot of stuff here about Archie Goodwin, um, John Buscema, John Byrne. Uh, Jim Lee did some of the covers. Actually, Jim Lee did two of my favorite Wolverine covers, one being 25 right here, which is like an early retelling of his story. Like maybe, maybe this is the first glimpse at Wolverine when he was a kid. Uh, Joe Duffy wrote some of this stuff in here, and like I said, John Buscema. Let me show you the issue 27, which became the popular cover because they used it for the cover to the NES cartridge, and that's this right here. Of course, you probably saw it like this with Sabretooth in the corner, and it was a recolored, but that is Epic Collection Volume 2. I love the stuff in there. That collects issues, by the way, I'm sorry, that co does collect issues 17 through 30 of the, here's the John Byrne, it looks like McFarlane, right? 17 through 30, and then the Scorpio Connection and the Jungle Adventure, like I mentioned. Moving on to Iron Man, The Return of the Ghost. I think they were not sure why this was not released last year. This is volume 14, by the way. Collecting Iron Man 233 to 244 and the Crash story, which I remember as a kid reading this, and I was like, keep in mind, this is the late 80s. Just let me show you the artwork here. And I was like, oh my god, this is the way comic books are going to look. It's the future. They're using computer-generated graphics. Like, I think I can call it computer-generated graphics. Look at that. I was like, this this is comic books. This is the Comic books are going to cost $20. It's going to be amazing. They're going to have chips built in where we can choose our own adventure. Yes, I got that from Big. But luckily, comic books did not go that route. Um, and it also collects issues uh, 22 of the Marvel fanfare stuff. And let's move on to the next epic. I, as you can see, I love epic. Someone suggested in the channel that I do an epic overview. And I've got quite a few, so I may do that. Uh, Captain America, because this is the way I collect like the Silver Age Captain America stuff. Because I don't own... I sold my Thor Omnibus Volume 1 and my Captain America Volume 1 and my Iron Man Volume 1. Uh, because, you know, I, I think epics are good enough for me. My Jack Kirby, I know this is going to sound blasphemous, then it's not need to be in oversized format. This is the Superior Strategium, and this is volume 17. So this took place in, yeah, there actually says right there, 1991 to 1992. Collecting 387 into 397. So we're almost caught up to where the Galactic Storm was taking place. And then we have the Sentinel of Liberty miniseries. There's four issues of this, and is it, uh, who did, Kevin, is it Kevin McGuire? Yeah, Kevin McGuire did the artwork in here. Fabian Niciasa wrote it, and I love the colors by Paul Mounts. Actually, when I was flipping through here, I could tell it was Paul Mounts, and I had forgotten that guy's name for some reason, and I'm like, oh, this brings me back to my childhood. Um, not this. That's, is that Michael Golden? Yeah, that is Michael Golden. This is when I had left X-Men. I was done after Onslaught. That that broke my heart enough, but but then I went back and started recollecting the issues when Morrison took over, and I went back and read everything in here. And holy crap, while there is some talent in here like Andy and Adam Coburn and of course Joe Madureira, this guy right here, my god. There is some art in here that is just pretty atrocious. And I don't know how those people got hired on, honestly. And well, that's just, this is early Steve Epting here. A lot different than his stuff on Velvet. Uh, a lot of X-Men. Oh, and Jimmy Chung, early Jimmy Chung stuff. And I kind of dug this stuff. You can kind of tell it's still him. And the faces still kind of look similar to the way his art style looks. So collecting Uncanny X-Men 338 through 340, annuals 96 and 97, and then X-Men, I think 58 through 61 in annual 97, X-Factor 130, and what else does it collect? It sits in the back. Uh, X-Men Unlimited 12 through 14. So that's all in here. So this takes place after the Onslaught Omnibus, if you have that. I got a chance to read a lot of books. Um, Gideon Falls, this was excellent. Don't want to flip too much through here, but it's about a Catholic priest that moves into the town of Gideon Falls, and there's this mystery with a red barn, and he sees the previous priest um, show up at the end of his bed, 
who was supposed to have died in a car accident, or I'm sorry, a mysterious death. Now the team that did this, this is Jeff Lemire and Andrea or Andre Sorrentino, same people that did the Green Arrow series and they did Old Man Logan, there's the Red Barn. Now, as that story's going on, we also have a story in the city where this kid is picking up, he sees things and he collects them, right? Because he knows they're all connected somehow. And he sees the things that are, he needs to pick up in red. And he sees a psychiatrist. And anyway, it's a really mysterious story. And I really dug it. I thought it was really good. Uh, here's a book that Maddie and I... Maddie's got the limited edition coming to her in a week or two. This is the Strangers in Paradise 25 Omnibus. This is after Strangers in Paradise, of course. And this was really nice. I was the first person that bought the hardcover. And I got it signed by Terry. So he signed it like that when I met him at the convention. I've not read any of this, so I don't want to flip too much through here, but I'll go to the back here and look at the ads. Glad those books are in print. As always, I asked them if they would re-release Strangers in Paradise in a hardcover, oversized hardcover omnibus again. He said the demand seems to be high, and I'm serious. There's probably not a higher demand than these days for that book. Uh, Wasted Space. Really enjoyed this book. Um, the art took me a little while to get into. Uh, it reminded me a lot of a European comic book in the way that it is written. Let me flip through here and just show you some of the art and talk a little, just a little bit about the story. The story is about this guy named Billy Bane who used to be the voice of the creator, whether the creator is God or uh, another being from another dimension or reality or planet, we don't know yet. And he quit. He walked away. So him and this guy right here who happens to be his fuckbot, F-U-K, but exactly what you think he does, um, anyway, they run up against this little girl right here who ends up running away because she is the eyes of the creator. She's the vision of the creator and she's seen visions of the destruction of a planet and she's asking for their help. And meanwhile, these creatures called Legion are coming after them. And like I said, the story itself was really good. Like it reminded me of the way that here, I want to look, just show you some of this beautiful covers in the way that European comics are written. It just, I was a little taken back because this is an American creator. And this is the covers. This is the same guy that draws the inside, but these covers remind me of uh, Bill Sienkiewicz. Just gorgeous artwork. Wish the insides were like this, but I get it. You know, this takes a lot of time. Uh, Hayden Sherman, by the way, is the artist. Really dug that. And next up, we have Oblivion Song. This one was okay. Um, uh, actually, I was a little disappointed by it. This is Robert Kirkman's new book, and I want it. Lorenzo Di Filesi is the artist that's what really kept me coming back i really dug the artwork post-apocalyptic future i don't know i just i wasn't hooked this took me a while to get hooked but it was worth it this is isola by brendan fletcher and carl keschel uh brendan fletcher is the guy that wrote the burnside batgirl and oh my god look at this artwork that is the reason to keep yourself reading this but, oh, it's so good. It turned out to be such a fun story. I really enjoyed it. It is confusing as hell at first. It wasn't until... I don't want to flip too much through here. Um, it wasn't until I got to the very end of the fourth issue that I'm like, oh, well, shit, that makes sense. So it pretty much is about a girl and her black tiger here, her companion. But there's a deeper connection than that. They live in the land of the dead, and she's trying to get her somewhere safe. And they're being hunted. And that's all I will say, but I mean, it's $9.99, you know, if you're looking for something at in stock trades to round up your order to 50 bucks, I highly recommend that, or this wonderful book right here, which is my highest possible recommendation uh, out of the stuff that I've read here. This is Skyward, um, who, I'm sorry, I want to give credit to the creators, because I, I don't know who this guy is, Joe Henderson, Lee Garbett, I love, love his artwork, and that's, that's what hooked me. Pretty much one day, gravity just goes to shit, and everybody starts falling up. That's how these people get disconnected, and there's a baby here. Now, 25 years later, I'm sorry, 20 years later, the baby's now grown up, and humanity has found a way to figure out how to live with gravity, without gravity, rather. So, her father has a way to bring back gravity, or he knows how to fix it, and his old partner in crime shows back up, and you kind of get a hint that, oh, maybe they know something. Maybe they're the ones that cost this to begin with. So, oh, man, this was so good. Apparently, it's been opted out for a movie. So, hey, that that's awesome. I love that story. Uh, moving on to Titans Volume 5 by DC. I think they're renumbering this. This is the Rebirth Run by Dan Abnett and Brent Peoples. I haven't read any of that, so I need to... Oh, this breaks my heart. So, 
Uh, a couple of days ago, I did the solicitations. Actually, no, that was yesterday. Holy crap. And they have canceled The Dark Knight. They have not canceled Cape Crusader Volume 3 yet. Now, this is Batman Cape Crusader Volume 3, or Volume 2. Some of the stuff that happens post-Crisis on Infinite Earths that has never been collected before. I mean, some of it has. Some of it has, I'm not going to lie. But there's a lot of stories in here that have never been collected. And I was so happy to finally have DC get this stuff out us to us. And nope, <laughs> they canceled Dark Knight Volume 3. Now everybody's thinking Cape Crusader Volume 2 is going to be canceled. That really sucks. So he collects Batman 432 to 439 and 443 to 444. That blows. So, uh, Next up is The Hunt for Wolverine, oversized hardcover. This is a book we are reviewing on Omni Bros Live, I believe, next Monday. And it's just a bunch of miniseries put together where people are going after Wolverine because he has come back in, spoilers, The Return of Wolverine. Now, I've done an overview of this, Promethea. If you want to check that out on the channel. This is Alan Moore's book. Got tired of waiting on the omnibus, so I decided to jump on the oversized hardcover. I did an overview of the Thanos War Infinity Origin, the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe omnibus. Those are all on the channel, and as well as the InCal up there, the limited edition InCal. And the last, um, actually, no, I'll talk about those two absolutes I just picked up. They're a little older, but I just got them in my collection. And before I do, here is Wonder Woman Rebirth, the only deluxe rebirth I picked up this month. Let's look at the inside here. And actually, let's, I'm actually surprised that they did not cancel this, considering it was not Greg Rucka, <laughs> Nicola Scott, and Liam Sharp. Um, so this is Wonder Woman Volume 3. Like I said, the Rebirth Collection. And it collects issues 26 through 30. So after Greg Rucka's run, Annual Number 1 and Steve Trevor Number 1. And apparently there was an oversized issue of the Wonder Woman 75th Anniversary Special Edition Number 1 that's collected in here. It's never been collected anywhere else. Still variant covers by Jenny Frizon. And I think this is, yeah, this is the 75th Anniversary stuff. I'm hoping they keep going because I haven't read James Robinson's run. Um... James Robinson, of course, is the guy from Starman and fell in love with that book. Now, let's look at these two absolutes really quick. Now, this is Absolute Superman and Batman, Volume 1 and 2. I couldn't pass up on these because somebody had them on sale in the Facebook group. And I own them already in trade paperback, but I wanted to get them in oversized card cover. Here, let's look at one. Uh, mainly because I really enjoy the art in here by Ed McGinnis, the late Michael Turner, and Carlos Pacheco, I think, does some of the volume two. So let's look at this. Okay, so this is volume one, collecting issues one through 13. While the story was, actually, it was a pretty lame uh, attempt at retconning Batman and Superman's origin. Uh, but it did kind of prelude all the way to Infinite Crisis, so I appreciated that. So let's look through here. A lot of gorgeous Ed McGinnis artwork. I love the way he draws Superman. I love, actually, I love the way he draws superheroes. It's a very cartoony look to his artwork, but man, dude kills it. He's the one that does the first story arc, and then, of course, we're introduced to Supergirl in this arc, and that's where she makes her appearance. Oh, God, I forgot about Pat Lee. Forgot he did an issue in here. Yikes. That doesn't need to be an oversized format. Aha. So here's the modern appearance of Supergirl. If you heard me talk about the Death and Return of Superman omnibus that's coming out, the first printing omitted Peter David's character Matrix Supergirl because they had just recently created this character. So they were like, yeah, this is the Supergirl. This is, this is Kara. This is, this is Superman's cousin. We're just going to ignore the fact that there was another Supergirl existing before this one. But anyway, that's a DC. Yeah, this is all gorgeous Michael Turner stuff. I love, I love the design of Supergirl. I think she's cute. And then you have extras in the back here. And there's that Michael Turner long torso. Man. God, it's hard to believe that guy's been gone for over a decade. And let's look at Volume 2 really quick and call it a day. So here is Volume 2. Both of these come in a slipcase. They don't have a dust jacket. 
Now, I do believe this collects something that has not been collected in the original trade paperbacks, and that is issue 26, if I'm not mistaken. So this does collect, yes, Superman, Batman, 14 to 26. Here's the Carlos Pacheco stuff. But let's get to issue 26. 26, for some reason, was omitted from the original trades. And then in the complete collections, it was put back on there. Uh, and that issue is the Sam Loeb issue. It's Jeff Loeb's son, who was uh, diagnosed with cancer. He was writing a story. I believe Pat Lee was actually going to be the artist on that. Let's see, yeah, here it is. But he passed away before he could complete it. So the story is Sam Loeb and the 26, and artwork by Michael Turner. And then sadly, Michael Turner passed away about a year or so later. So this one has a lot of different artists. Uh, J Jim Lee, as you can tell, Jeff Loeb. I'm sorry, Jeff Loeb. Tim Sell, Carlos Pacheco, Rob Liefeld, Ian Churchill. Just, just flipping through John Cassidy. And then you have this right here. This is Sam's story. Oh, man. This is, yeah, this was supposed to be the original story that was supposed to be printed that Sam wrote. Man. I remember reading that. That's a little rough to read. Especially now. You now have kids. Good lord. And then just extras in the back. Like I said, I got these for a good deal. And I wanted to do an overview of them. Because I didn't own them. I'm sure plenty of channels have done these already. And that is part one of what I picked up for the month of March. Don't forget to tune into this channel for part two. Don't forget to check out tonight's episode of Old Reader, New Reader. Where we talk about Lazarus. It's one of my favorite segments we do on the channel. Again, this was Omar. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint. <laughs>